Hey everybody, welcome to Local Business Hacks Podcast. I'm your host, Carl Case, and I'm on a mission to help you. Every week we're gonna be talking to local business owners and experts to get their best tips, tricks, and hacks to grow your business. This show's designed to teach you, inspire you, and motivate you to take massive action and start to build your future-proof business. Whether you're just starting off or you're taking your existing business to the next level, this episode is for you. So let's get started. Good morning, listeners. I am super excited to introduce to the podcast, Gina Perrin. Gina, tell the world who you are and thanks for joining. Good morning. It's great to be here. Okay. Well, a little background about me. Let's see. In 2010, I was 31 years old and uh, found love again after a really painful divorce. So super excited. Um, I was engaged to a man named Russ. And uh, we were working on blending our families. He had two boys and I have two girls. Uh, so it's busy, busy with that life. We shared, um, we shared a very similar interest in physical fitness. Um, so we were that couple, you know, um, very much the, the health couple and the, the gym couple. And um, this was the first year that him and his boys were going to be joining in my family uh, Christmas celebration which was really big. Uh, Christmas Eve was off the charts at my parents' house. That was like the the event to go to was Christmas Eve. Um, you know, so we all gathered and, you know, all the siblings, the kids, the nieces, nephews, uh, food, wine, presents, uh, more presents than you could possibly imagine. Uh, so the night was in full swing, just uh, like any other year, uh, with all the hubbub going on, I didn't even notice that my brother David hadn't showed up uh, until we cleaned up food and everything. And the night was starting to wind down. We all started to notice like, Hey, where's David? Um, you know, he wasn't married and didn't have kids and kind of just showed up when he wanted to. So it wasn't too unusual. Um, so I head home to my house for my girls to have, you know, do the cookies and milk and head to bed Christmas morning. They opened up their gifts. We had a great time and we we were getting ready to head to their dad's house where they would go for the day on Christmas Day. And um, and then I, I headed to Russ's to spend the day with him. Uh, but before I left, I text my brother, Merry Christmas. No response. And he always responded. So I hop in the car and back then we had those big ear pieces, you know, you put in your yep. ear. Yeah. <laughs> With a little line back to your With mouth. the line, you know exactly what I'm talking about, yep. right? Motorola. Um, I mean, it was, it was 12 years ago, right? And, um, you know, I, I call my dad and I, you know, good morning, Merry Christmas. I am, I'm heading to David's to, to check on him. He said, I'm actually on my way there as well. Uh, so we agreed to, to meet there. So now I get Russ on the line and he's in my ear and, about 20 minutes later, my dad and I uh, arrive at David's and no answer. Repeated knocking at the door. Uh, we finally decide to break into his garage uh, where we found his truck had not moved. Uh, so, and we are met with another locked door. He had the door locked from the garage going into the house. Now kind of the panic is setting in. I, I frantically search his car, find a ring of keys. We, we get into the house. We are running from room to room, yelling his name, David, 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 um, until we are met with his office door that is locked. Third door that we are now heading into that is, that is locked. Um, my dad fumbled with a bunch of keys to see which one unlocked the door. It seemed like it was kind of in slow motion. Uh, there were a lot of keys on this ring until one finally opened the door and uh, he was gone. He was gone. Um, you know, the next minutes were were a blur. Uh, Russ was still in my earpiece that I had forgotten about. So he heard everything, the cries, the screams, the, the chaos. Um, you know, less than an hour later, they were carrying him out in a body bag. The next weeks and months, I'm trying to piece together what had happened. Like, what, what did I miss? I was so self-involved in my, my own life. Um, and I had remembered a couple of weeks prior to his death, um, I dropped my daughter off at his house for tutoring. He was a math genius. 
And as I walked into his family room, I noticed this pistol was laying on the coffee table. And my immediate first thought was he's going to kill himself with that gun. My immediate second thought was why in the world would you think something so horrible? So I dismissed it. But that same thing came out of my mouth on my way to David's that morning when I was talking to Russ. I said, my brother's dead. And his reaction was my first thought. Um, you know, why would you say something so horrible? But David's death set off a chain of events in my life that I never could have imagined. Within six months, my relationship was over. The engagement was called off. In less than four years, I left everything that I knew and moved across the country to L.A. Um, I, I was definitely functioning in, in fight or flight. I had moved very much away from taking care of myself the way that I had my entire life. Um, I was overeating, over drinking, not just completely had lost the, the Gina that I had been previous. And then I walked into a local gym, my, my happy place, my, my home base. Um, you know, my dad was a, comp a competitive bodybuilder. So, you know, I kind of grew up in the gyms. It was just, just, just in me. So it was like coming home. And uh, I ended up getting back into coaching. I, I coached for a couple of gyms around here and really got my physical fitness back. I was starting to feel just, just really good in my own body again. Um, but that's just one piece, right? One, one, one piece of the wellness puzzle is your physical fitness. You know, then there's, there's, there's mental. Yeah. yeah. There's a, there's mental too. Right. And, and really without both of those pillars, you're not, you're not achieving that, that full rounded wellness that, that we talk about a lot and that I talk about with my clients, it all needs to be addressed. Um, and I hadn't addressed what had happened. And and so many big changes and so many losses, uh, not just that. from so many losses in a really short amount of time, right? So like relationship losses, of course, my you know my brother, um, the loss of of leaving every friend and family and environment that I had known um, my whole life. So I found a mentor, I found a coach, and she changed my life. She got me back to writing, um, addressing everything that had happened. She had fixed the broken piece of me, the mental. You did it. You just okay. had some help. I did, right? Yeah, I did. But the the thing is, Carl, I had to I had to realize that I I needed to ask for it. I needed to go out and search it and find it. Right? No, but that was you. That was me. And um, and. So it's a really big deal when my clients reach out to me and, and I'm like, you, the first step is you're, you're reaching out. Something, something needs to be changed. Sometimes it's just a tweak. Um, and, and sometimes it's a little bit bigger than that. So I, um, so after meeting her, I went back to school and studied positive psychology. And I now, you know, transitioned into being a physical coach in the gyms was great. Um, but I wanted to reach a, a larger audience. The people in the gym would come up and ask me questions and advice before and after classes. And I felt that calling to work with them one-on-one. -on -one. So COVID was the perfect time to, to get myself educated on that. And I took a leap of faith and started my own company. And now I'm one-on-one -on -one coaching with some of the most amazing people in the world. And we're talking about high-powered executives that they're really great in business, but maybe something is missing either physically or mentally. Well, that's the that's the uh, the short of it, how I ended up here. Well, Gina, obviously you haven't gained an angel and I appreciate you sharing that story with us. It's super moving and I'm a little emotional at the moment, but I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna table that thought and feel it through the Zoom call. Um yeah. So congratulations, first of all, for what you said your coach did for you. It's really you. And that's something that our listeners are laser focused in the health and wellness space. And that's something that I think that everyone that's listening can learn from in the sense that when somebody's ready to make that decision and walk into your F45 or your Restore Hyper Wellness or your space, you know, mm -hmm. our clients are there to help you to live longer and live he healthier and happier. 
And when somebody makes that decision, whether it's through a Facebook ad or finding you on Google or just getting a referral from a friend to walk into your doors and give you a call in your consulting business or in our clients, take that to heart. It's not just somebody wanting to try something for the first time, but it's somebody wanting to do better. Obviously, if you're a donut shop, it's maybe a little different conversation. They're trying to feel happier and they're getting that from sugar. But that's a big lesson that I think that everyone could learn is that when somebody makes that first decision and you're the person that they're making it for, maybe they're deciding to make that switch from one gym to another or from working out on their own to coming to a boutique group fitness class or whatever that may be, take it to heart because you never know what they're dealing with or why they're making that decision, but they decided to do it with you. So that's awesome. Congrats again. Thank you. So, I, do, I do take it very seriously because when I walked into that gym here in LA to say, you know what, I need to get back to me. Nobody there knew what I was dealing with. Mm-hmm. And just to, to your point, we never know what somebody's going through. So everybody that was really kind to me, even I say it all the time, even strangers out in the world, giving me a smile. And even though I was, I was, I was dying inside. Like it was, it was, I was really, um, I was really struggling. I still get emotional when I talk about it, but I really thank him for the life that he has, that he has given me. Um, it took my mentor though. And it took my coach to help me shift that mindset. Right. We we lose something a lot in our life. It happens repeatedly and they can be small things or they can be big things. Now, how we how we handle it and how we look at it and we change our perspective can change everything about our world. Yeah, how it's we learn like magic. <laughs> you gotta learn from those experiences and not just let them be things that happened. Yeah. For and sure. Somehow see a positive in it. I could be living in New Jersey right now and married and the stay-at-home wife that I was planning on being and and my life could, took a completely unexpected turn. Um, and that and was now awesome. you're thriving and potentially coming to live in Boca Raton, Florida. Hey. What's better than that, baby? I mean, I think we could be neighbors. <laughs> you know, I think all of America wishes that they were my neighbor right outside my door is the ocean. And I got some great restaurants nearby. Yeah. You do not live in a, in a terrible part of the world, my friend. (laughs) I'm very, very blessed and and happy to be here. So Gina, thank you again. Let's talk a little bit about how your fitness career ultimately started and what drove you to become a consultant today for, for who? So talk to me about your brand. Talk to me about that journey. I know that you had a piece of you at a big box gym today. So give me a little bit about that. What got you to here and maybe some stories that that you can share because a lot of people start their journeys and fitness careers off in big box gyms. Yeah. And I just planned on being there. I didn't really plan on it going any further. So what happened when I was there is, look, I love to meet people. I love to talk. I'm at the top of my personality traits. Kindness is like super up there. So I'm very personable and make friends with people. So they started to come to me for more advice outside of cycling class or whatever class I was teaching. They started coming to me about their drinking habits and their food habits. And well, what do you do? And what do you, what do you use? And then why are you so happy all the time? (laughs) I get that question too often. I I mean, that is like the best question anybody can ask me if that's, that's their perspective and that's what they're seeing it's because I really am. And I'm like, this is, it's working. <laughs> that aura. Um, yeah. And it started to snowball. Like if they wanted more information and it was like, you know, Hey, how about you give me a call outside the gym? It started like that. And then one of the people that I just admire most in this world, she's just phenomenal. I see you're looking at your network on, on social media and I see that she just got this degree in health and wellness, uh, positive psychology in here. And I'm thinking, what is that? I want to know more of that. What, what, what is that? And the world shuts down. This all happened literally right at 2020. So when they said you could socially distance outside, I immediately gave her a call and I said, can we go for a walk? Can we so can we do a social distance walk? And she's like, absolutely. I mean, anything to get out of the house, right? 
to, for our own mental stability. But um, so we go on this walk and that walk changed everything for me. I said, what is this that you're, that you're studying and that you're doing? And, and she told me about the program. And then, you know, after hundreds of hours of coaching, you can then sit for the board exam and become a board certified coach, take it to the next level. And, and, and I, I left that walk and I went home and I said, that's the missing piece. I've been, it was my aha moment. It was my aha moment. And, and she probably doesn't even know, but I, I thank her because she changed my life right there. It was like the next, there was a step that was missing that I was missing in the gyms by wanting to reach more people to, to help more people. And that was the missing piece. And I did a lot of praying on it and a lot of writing on it. And Hey, is this what I should do? And, uh, and just took the, you know what they say, it's don't ever wait for the right time. Sure. You think you're right time is now. Yeah, the right time is now. So I ended up meeting a lot of great people. I have a lot of great people on my team and my clients, they just blow me away every day with with the work that that they do. Because really, ultimately, as you said, now they're doing the work as well. Yeah, you're just empowering them to look at a different direction. 100%. Yeah. yeah. I'm a, I'm a big, uh, I don't know if you've heard any of the other podcasts, but I'm a big Tony Robbins fan. He's definitely my guru. I just sat through five days of business mastery with him and oh. it was incredible. Just had Todd Hartley yesterday on the podcast, CEO of Wirebuzz who spoke at Tony. So really, really cool. Um, Gina, so talk to me about your brand. How can people find you and who is your ideal client? Oh, oh great questions. Oh, by the way, just if I move my head here, do you see the Tony Robbins books back here? They're all Tony Robbins. Awesome. Big fan as well. Yes. Um, yeah. So my company is Gigi Lifestyle. My nickname is is Gigi or Gina, whatever you want to call me. Just call me. Um, and uh, I, I went with the lifestyle because it is a full lifestyle. It's every it's you know every aspect. I mean, I address everything from sleep to the mental wellness to the kind of like that holistic approach. Uh, you can find me on my website, uh, GinaParin.com. Um, and of course, you can find me on LinkedIn and all the social platforms under under my name. My ideal client, you know, they're typically very busy, very driven clients that, again, entrepreneurs, CEOs, executives, but you certainly do not need to be that. My ideal client comes to me already ready to work. They have a willingness to be open-minded to some other suggestions or tweaks and things that they're doing um, that, well, I've just always done it this way. Well, let's try, let's try something else. So definitely awesome. when you come to me and a willingness to learn is, is really, really huge. My saying is happiness is an inside job. And I yep. say that to all my clients, happiness is an inside job, you know, so it's so breaking to- bad habits. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes we have habits that we don't think are that bad. We don't think they're even impacting much of our lives at all. And and they end up being huge. Oh, yeah. Huge. They end up being really huge, right? Like how we fuel our body to head into a meeting or to be clear for the day is is big, you know? Yeah. Um, and all those little things that it, I just make them aware of. That's awesome. So, Gina, talk to me. Give me a story or two that our listeners could learn from. Obviously, outside of reaching out to someone for help or breaking those habits and learning from things that you need to learn from, because every experience is an opportunity to learn. But are there any stories that come to mind that you personally are thinking of or that your clients are constantly reminding you of that that come across often? Yeah, so we all have one interesting thing in common. This is the first thing that just came to my mind. And this was me prior to me becoming a coach as well, just so you know, okay, I was um, that the, the busier we are, the more productive we are. I hear I sleep five hours because I'm just so busy. I'm running two companies. I have no time to do anything. The whole fast social media thing that constantly have to be to be busy and that makes them feel like they're a little bit more productive. I found that when I got quiet, and then when I can quiet my clients down a little bit, even if it's a few minutes a day at certain times a day, getting quiet brings a lot of clarity. That is probably the number one thing across the board. 
I mean, I've constantly come to me. They're like, I sleep four hours a night, five hours a night. Uh, first thing I do when I wake up is grab that cell phone, check my emails, you know, and um, there's a belief that if they're doing that, they're just so busy and they're being productive. Take some time for gratitude, people. Take some time for grat. Oh, gratitude is my big, you know, they, they probably get a little sick of hearing it. But I would have probably told you that I was um, living in gratitude prior to David's death. And I can tell you absolutely, hands down, I was not. There's yep. one thing to say it and there's another thing to practice it. Yeah, and you're blind when you're not. You're absolutely blind. You are 100% correct. Without even really saying it, but we're saying it, right, is to just quiet the noise. The productivity level jumps when... Yeah, listen to yourself. <laughs> listen listen to yourself. That that seems to be at least a more of a blanket across the board um, mentality. You know, get up, check those emails, throwing coffee down, down the mouth, right? I need coffee to wake up. A lot of misconception, right? <laughs> and I love coffee. I know we're both drinking ours right now. Um, but there are some great tools that if you shift that, it's going to change everything about your day. Yeah, it's super important. Gina, are there any resources, things that you recommend as resources for people to really take advantage of that quiet time and when's best for those people? Yeah. So um, really interesting. If you wake up one hour earlier every day, do you know you gain 15 days in a year of your life? 15 days if you wake up one hour earlier. Wow. So uh, think about that. Think about like what you can do in 15 days. Now, not saying that you all have to do that, but um, it's a game changer. And when, um, so, you know, the first thing I'd say, you know, I get up, do not check that phone. Don't have it anywhere near you. And, you know, for 20 minutes, 20 minutes to 30 minutes, I am listing off everything I am grateful for everything. I write it down. I've got sticky notes all over the house. It's a joke. I, you know, stick it on the mirror. I am grateful that I woke up today, whatever right. that is. Um, you know, on, on my website, there's a free resources tab at the top, totally free eBooks um, that are up there for, for people to, to read through. And we're always adding more. Um, and I have a monthly newsletter that gives a lot of those tips and tricks. Amazing. Um, but I would say to focus on your morning routine first. That should be the time for you. That should be your alone time. That should be, and whatever it is you want to do with that time. I had a client who took my advice so seriously. She got up an hour earlier every day. Guess what she did with that time? She finished her book. She wow. Wrote book, right? I, I had a feeling you were about to say that. She wrote a book. I'm like, okay, I need That's to up my game here. Overachiever. <laughs> right. I'm like, I stretched. Um, no, but whatever it is that you want to do, and it may take a long period of time. But, you know, the other thing that I repeat over and over again, they get sick of hearing it. 1% better each day compounded is over 3000% better a year. 100% the compound effect. Love that. I love that. Yeah. It's That's true. awesome. Well, love, love yourself, people, because without you, you got nothing. Yeah, nothing. It all starts with you. <laughs> amazing advice. Yeah. Um, Gina, I so appreciate your story, you know, what you're doing. For those of you that aren't aware, Gina came from a big box gym called Equinox in the past. So obviously being exposed to a slew of different clientele, especially in the California market. Yes. So I'm beyond glad that you were able to take that and become what you are today. So I'm um, Incredibly excited to continue to follow your journey. And I thank you for being a guest on our podcast. Thank you, Carl. I appreciate you. I'm in nothing but gratitude to be here with you. Awesome. Bye-bye for now, everyone. See you on next week's episode. Thank you so much. That's it for this week's episode. I hope you found it helpful. Be sure to head over to our site, local-business-hacks.com to check out the show notes and send me questions or ideas for future episodes. If you want to grow your business, just like the people you've heard from here, follow Local Business Hacks podcast and tune in for new tips, tricks, and tactics. Until next time, thanks for listening and keep hacking.